Hey guys, welcome to TCR, Sid here. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, today, we've got an abundance of zucchini from Mike's Garden. And a few of you are like, make zucchini bread, make zucchini bread. And I was like, I don't think I've ever made zucchini bread. And I actually realized that I have made it before. But I remember a friend of mine, Christy, making a lemon zucchini bread that was like delicious. So I've decided I'm gonna make some of that lemon zucchini bread today, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Okay guys, so I'm gonna start out with doing some of the, the separate ingredients before I start in on the zucchini. Um, you're gonna to wanna to zest about two lemons total. Um, I like to do one in the glaze of lemon zest and then one for the actual um, cake. So, and this is a great little grater. We've got a link to it in our Amazon store. Um, it comes in a set of two, one that does smaller ones and one that does larger ones and it's really easy for, for doing your lemon zest. I will be putting this recipe down below with all the amounts for the ingredients. I'm making a double batch. Um, because I have so many zucchinis. <laughs> so I'm going to be making a lot. Um, so first thing we want to do, I'm going to get these cut up and I'm going to get them shredded and grated. Um, you can do that to whatever thickness you like. I'm going to be doing it at kind of maybe like a medium, uh, medium to fine uh, grating. And then we're going to make sure that we get all the moisture out of the zucchini. We're going to, if you've got a cheesecloth grate or a dish towel, something, you're going to put it all in there and you're going to wring it out and get it as dry as you can. So this is three cups of shredded zucchini, which was one of the giant zucchinis that I have here. I thought that doing a really large batch, a double batch would utilize more zucchini, but it's not. So I still have to find something else to do with these things but at least I've eliminated one. So this is three cups of zucchini here shredded and I've got it inside this this towel so I'm going to bring it all up so I can try to get out as much of the liquid as I can. So I'm going to twist the top and it works a little bit you know a dish towel is fine if you have cheesecloth that's good um, but you can see all the liquid coming out. I already got quite a bit out but you want to get out as much as you can um, so that your bread isn't too soggy. Zucchini juice, I guess that could be a thing, right? You could put that in your, uh, in your smoothie. <laughs> Why not? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, with my lemon zest and my dry zucchini. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a bowl and I'm just gonna stick it to the side for now. Okay, so I've got combined here my uh, three cups of granulated sugar and three quarters of a cup of the coconut oil and I kind of whisked them together. In here I've got four cups of flour, um, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. And I just whisked this all together to combine it and just set it aside. In here I've got Three, I'm sorry, two thirds of a cup of vanilla almond milk, um, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and four eggs that um, I always leave my eggs at room temperature, so I don't like baking with freezing cold eggs. So I usually leave whatever I'm going to be baking with out at room temperature just because it's better than shocking it. I generally have better luck with my batter that way. So I'm gonna get this all mixed up here. So I just started preheating the oven for 350. I'm gonna go ahead and add my lemon juice and my egg mixture with my goodies in here. I'm gonna mix this all together with the lemon juice. Your sugar, your eggs, your vanilla all that good stuff, your oil. Take our flour mixture here and we're gonna slowly incorporate this and just kind of stir it and kind of bring it together. So I kind of like to do it a little bit at a time and just kind of slowly work it in. 
Oven's up to temperature in case you were wondering. Now I'm gonna do one in a traditional um, bread loaf, which I've greased a smaller cake pan and one bread loaf. Um, I've greased them both. I'm just kind of folding it, stirring it. I'm not really like beating it. Just kind of gently turning it into the batter. Now we've got our zucchini and our lemon zest. It's time to gently combine these two things. Um, I'm gonna kind of fold this in. So since I have this in such a large bowl, I'm actually gonna bring this into here. And I'm gonna sort of fold the zucchini in just until it's thoroughly covered in the batter. Just kind of folding it in. I like to go around the bowl and then kind of fold it from underneath. And that's pretty well done right there. Okay, so I did grease this pan um, and I did put my parchment paper in and as well as my other pan. So I'm gonna see how far this, this is gonna go. Spread it in there nice and evenly. It smells really good. In there. there we go. And this I can just kind of glop in here. So again, like I said, this is a double batch that I made because I had so much zucchini and I totally thought that I was going to be able to um, kind of get more, you know, be able to use more zucchinis than just the one giant one. But I mean, I could have made six zucchini bread cakes, whatever, and still probably had leftover. <laughs> so, cause there's like four more in there and then, yeah. So now my mother-in-law just posted a recipe that she did with yellow squash. So I'm gonna have to check that out. It's not very healthy. Adele, it's not very healthy. I read the ingredients. So I'm gonna have to tweak it and make it healthier because I'm just, that's just how I roll. So that's just how I roll. Just trying to get this a little bit even here. I like doing a lot of um, breads as cakes. Like when I do banana bread, sometimes I'll do it as banana cake. Um, lots of things like that. Um, Amish bread, I like to do it as a cake. Um, just because it's sort of a weird hybrid. It's not a true bread, even though it's referred to as a bread and often comes in a loaf shape. It's definitely more in the cake family. Anything that makes batter, is cake. <laughs> That's my rule. If there's batter involved, and this is definitely batter, this is not dough. So it, that's my rule of thumb. Anytime I see a recipe for something that's in loaf form, nine times out of 10, I end up just making a cake. I am making one in a loaf form today just because I am making such a large amount that I figured why not. But that's my tip from, from you, me to you is if you're like, oh man, I don't have any bread pans or whatever, and I want to make this banana bread. Use a small cake pan, you'll be fine. You might have to adjust the baking time slightly if it's really thin, um, depending on the size of the pan you're using. So that's why I say try to use a smaller one. Um, this is one of those odd ones that's only like um, like nine by nine or something like that. It's one of those weird, not nine by nine because that'd be a square. It is definitely a rectangle, but it's, it's not a true nine by 11 or anything like that. Um, it's definitely smaller. So these are ready to go in the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven. So these are gonna need to bake for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer for 45 minutes and we'll check it then. But in the meantime, we'll make the lemon glaze that's gonna go on the top. So for my glaze, I've got some lemon zest in here and about a cup of lemon juice. And I'm gonna do Probably about two to two and a half, possibly as much as three cups of sugar. Um, I like to play around with the glaze when I make this. This is a similar glaze to what I do when I make my scones. Um, these are actually, this is a half a cup, so I'm doing multiple scoops. Let's get that combined and see how it looks first. And if you want to really take it to the next level, you can sift it first. Um, I'm not doing that today just because my back is still not 100% and it's starting to get a little mad at me right now. Right now, right now. Yeah. 
Everything's ready for more sugar. More powdered sugar or confectioner sugar, however you want to call it. I never really measure when I'm making glaze just because you can't screw it up. You really can't. Lemon glazes are really easy. You can always add more of the opposite ingredient. If it's too, you know, if it's too thick, add more lemon juice. If it's too runny, add more powdered sugar. It's, you know, it's all up to kind of what you like. And I want to make it a little bit thicker. So I'm actually going to add even more sugar. Yeah. You know me. Cake is simply a frosting support unit, and in this case, a glaze support unit. And like I said, I did add some lemon zest in here because I like to kind of kick it up a notch. But look at that, that's pretty perfect right there. That's gonna be good. That's exactly the consistency I want for that glaze. Perfect. So now we just set it aside. Um, if you would like, you can also stick this in the fridge while this is baking. Sometimes I like to do that to firm it up a little bit so that if I'm applying it to um, a cake that's only been, you know, cooling for a little bit, if it's something that's supposed to be served warm, that way it doesn't completely just go to the bottom. It kind of takes its time and by the time the cake cools, it just ends up being the perfect amount of glaze. So that's totally up to you, but that's, I do that with my um, cinnamon rolls a lot of times. Um, because I make the frosting the night before so it just makes it easier to cover them all right guys so they ended up being in the oven for 55 minutes um, hello my rack fell uh, they ended up being in the oven for 55 minutes and I checked them I did the toothpick check and they came out totally clean they smell amazing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lift this out now it's still hot, so obviously I'm using the, this. I'm going to go ahead and let this cool on here. Same thing with this one. And I'll be able to set this back in here if I leave it on here. Um, I can peel this off of it too if I want to flip it. But for my purposes right now, I'm just going to transfer it so it can cool better. It turned out really nice looking. I, it smells so good. Here's the loaf I did. Now I'm gonna let these cool for about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the glaze on. Okay, so I've let these cool and I transferred them back into their pans, respectively. And I'm gonna put this over the top. I like a nice thick glaze over the top. So there we go, fabulous lemon zucchini bread, ready to go. And we found some yummy uses for some things in the garden. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you try making it yourself with some of your garden goodies. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you get the notifications.